what's going on guys, Super Savage uh 789 here bringing you guys another video and today we're doing what if Broly was sent to Earth part 2 now before I get into the recap I just want to say you guys absolutely killed it with support we were on like 60 something likes last time well not likes but views last time I checked and that's amazing for, for such a small channel like this if we could get even half of that in about a week I'd be happy so for a quick recap King Vegeta sent Broly to Earth instead of Vampa Told Paragus they sent him to Vampa. After going to Vampa and his ship breaking, Paragus quickly realizes his son isn't there and shoots himself. On Earth, Broly encounters Grandpa Gohan. The two become fast friends, but unfortunately, Broly accidentally kills his grandpa. Kami, feeling the strength of the Ozaru, takes out his tail, and once discovering of his grandpa's death, Broly removes some of his garments and places it around him like a belt. Then he runs into Bulma. The two of them went on an adventure. Now, we arrive at when Krillin first arrived at Master Roshi's island. I don't think that, in this timeline, Krillin and Broly would be fast friends like Goku and Krillin. As you have to remember, in early Dragon Ball, Krillin was kind of a dick. Like, if you recall, he sabotaged Goku so he could have lunch. And, just yeah, overall, he was like that. And I don't think Broly would be such optimistic as Goku was. Roshi would sense this, and would send Krillin away, but then he'd stop. This could be a great way for them to train. So, thinking this, he says that they are in a little contest, the first one to bring a girl back and train under him. Broly calls for his Kinto Un, leaping on the clouds flying away, as Krillin gets in his boat and paddles so fast that Roshi can barely keep up with his eyes. Broly quickly finds Launch in trouble, and he knows that it's a girl, instead of Goku not knowing gender. He jumps down, deflecting the bullets and accidentally killing the cops, grabbing launch, jumping back on Kinto Un, and flying back off to Kame House. Hours later, Krillin arrives, it's now dusk, and tells his master that, fortunately, he couldn't find any girls. Before he leaves, Roshi stops him. He says that determination like that cannot go unnoticed, and so he allows Krillin to join his turtle school. The next day, Roshi takes two of them out and says that they should see what martial arts skills they have right off the bat, so he knows how much he has to teach them. Krillin rushes up Roshi, and although he doesn't put up a good fight, Roshi can tell that his martial arts skills are above the rest. Krillin then gives Broly a cocky smirk as he steps up against Roshi. Without any of them seeing it, Roshi is flung as Broly is stood there, his fist out extended. Having punched the air and launched Roshi. This shocks both Roshi, Krillin, and Turtle. After swimming back on the island, Roshi says that Broly doesn't need to do the training that he had in mind. He can just spar with him, but Krillin should probably go do the training. Krillin goes out in the fields and delivers the milk as normal, which, although he's significantly weaker, his determination pushes him and he might get a tiny bit stronger from this. Broly and Roshi have been sparring together. The two of them become fast friends, with Broly getting respect for him, for training Grandpa Gohan. The two of them keep sparring, with Roshi getting a little bit stronger. I'd say his power level will go from around 139 to about 200, and that's a conservative guess, over 10 months. And Krillin would get much stronger, and so he'd be able to do martial arts training in around 6 months. Broly is offered a gi, but he decides that he doesn't want to use it, his arm will be good enough. At least that's what he first thinks, but after arriving at the 21st Tenkaichi Budokai, he decides that putting on a gi is probably the best bet here. However, he still keeps his belt, as even though it's not practical in a fight, he still wants to wear it to respect his grandpa. Krillin calls him stupid for wearing such an ugly belt. Who would want to do that? And Broly lashes out. He rushes at Krillin, and Roshi stands in front and tells him to stop. Broly ultimately agrees. The three of them then find Yamcha and Bulma with Pua and Oolong, and they say hello. And then the Tenkaichi Budokai goes about the same, with Roshi entering with Jackie Chun. Broly finishes off Garen in one blow, as he hits the wall really hard before his wings can even start to flutter. In the second round, Krillin loses much faster, as his cockiness and wanting to get stronger has made him forget the simple things about martial arts and he rushes Jackie Chan to try and impress Broshi in the stands to show that he's much better than Broly. But 
This cockiness makes him get wrung out much faster. Jackie Chan reminds him to keep a cool head during fights, and Krillin takes this to heart, although he doesn't really want to. Then, Broly goes up against Nam. Now, Nam is a smart fighter, and sends Broly's strength. He decides to go for his finishing move straight away. He leaps up in the air, does his cross-arm dive, and Broly simply just kicks him, and he goes flying out of the arena. Nam is upset that he couldn't get the money for his village, but Jackie Chan still gives him the capsule like normal, with Nam doing the favour for him. Convincing Yamcha that he isn't Roshi. In the finals, Jackie Chan and Broly fight, with Broly easily knocking out Jackie Chan in just a couple of blows, wanting to impress his master. Little does he know that his master is fighting him right now. So Jackie Chan is flown out, and Broly wins just that easy. And because his tail has been ripped out, he doesn't go to Zaru at this point. He leaps on Kinto Un and waves goodbye to his friends flying away. Now we start the Red Ribbon Saga where he'd come across Colonel Silver, I believe it was. He finds a camp, destroys all the soldiers, including Colonel Silver, grabs the Dragon Ball and continues on, like he does in the manga. I don't believe he does that in the anime, but I know he does that in the manga. Then he continues off, going to Muscle Tower, actually making it towards where Snow's village is, a bit closer, arriving at the doorstep before passing out, due to his immense strength and key control. They warm him up and give him a cut like they do Goku, and he goes off to Muscle Tower. He literally punches it really hard, and the whole tower starts to shake, and then starts to collapse. And the only survivors are General Murasaki, barely, Boyon, who's starting to freeze from the cold, and quickly becomes a statue, Ata, as he was really powerful, and a really badly damaged General White, the mayor, barely clinging on to life. Broly grabs the man, takes him out of there, before both General Murasaki and General White walk up to him. Broly easily just knees them both, and two of them go down. Now, I'm going to leave this unclear whether or not they die, but you can interpret that in your way. Then, Broly tells Aether not to try it, as they all died, and he continues searching for the Dragon Ball. Broly is very quiet, and so I don't think he would want to talk to them. But Ata calls him a good person and says that he has a Dragon Ball, giving it to Broly. Broly thanks him and leaps on Kinto Un, flying off to his next location. He goes to Bulma with the Dragon Radar and she fixes it. I think he'd find her much faster, but also I think he'd accidentally kill someone. Do you remember the scene where Goku got in a taxi but was kicked out because he had no money? I don't think Broly would take too kindly to that. So he let out a huge yell and destroyed the taxi before carrying on an adventure. Oh, this was Dragon Ball, really wacky, so let's just say nothing happens because of it. Bulma arrives and sees Broly where she fixes his Dragon Raider as normal. The two of them continue to Kame House, where Krillin and Launch come back with the submarine. After emerging from the submarine, Krillin gives Broly a bitter stare, who stares at him back also bitterly. Krillin asks what he's doing there as he comes to see a true warrior. Broly simply scoffs as he's not worth his time. Then Krillin walks into Kame House, and Broly and Bulma take the ship to the pirate cave. Events play out like normal, with Broly one-punching the pirate robot with ease, causing it to detonate. The two of them move on, and they see two different paths, and decide that the best possible way to check is to split up. So Broly goes to the octopus place, and Bulma gets to the chest, where General Blue is waiting. Blue yells for him not to yell, and points a shotgun at her, Bulma does the exact opposite and yells, Broly, help! He shoots her, and Broly is so fast that he rushes straight through the walls and through the water, and lands right in front of her, grabbing the bullets and chucking them to the ground, like they're nothing. Blue tries a paralysis, but that does nothing, and Broly simply walks up to him, flicks him on the head, and shoves him straight through, bunch of rock, into the ocean, where he drowns. They grab the Dragon Ball and the treasure, and get out of there very easily. Continuing on, Broly arrives at Corrin's tower, where Colonel Yellow has a Upa. Broly easily kicks Colonel Yellow out of his ship and throws the ship at him as he grabs Upa midair and lands on the ground, feeling the explosion behind him. Then, Bora thanks Broly quite dearly as he just saved his son. That's what Tao Piper. He kills Bora as angry Broly as he rushes at the assassin, grabs him by the ponytail, and rips his head straight off, not giving a crap. He throws his head away and kicks his body the other direction. 
and Broly carries on. Because of this, he never climbed up Corrin's tower, as he never had a reason to. He didn't need the training, nor as a world in danger, simply because he's that strong. Oh yeah, and Broly also promises Upa that he'll revive his dad with the Dragon Balls, as he knows what it's like to lose someone he loves dearly. He calls Kinto U once again, and Fun slips onto it, flying off the Red Ribbon base, attacking it and easily dismantling it. Not even Assistant Black's huge robot thing is enough to take down Broly, even land a scratch in him, as he simply breaks it apart, not looking like he even moved. Grabbing him out of it, grabbing him by the throat and squeezing hard, causing his head to explode. He grabs the two Dragon Balls, but then he quickly realises that he can't find him. Everyone, except Krillin, arrives outside the Red Room base where he sees it dismantled. And Broly asks why he can't see the Dragon Ball. Is it broken? The Roshi asks, says that he can go see his sister Baba. So Yamcha and Broly decide to go, picking up Upa along the way. Yamcha goes first, and he gets too cocky against Fangs, the vampire, who knocks him out. But Upa and Poa and a tag team manage to knock him out as normal. Broly goes up against the Invisible Man, who puts up a challenge for him. But because of this challenge, Broly gets angry. That's how a huge scream and completely pushes everything off of the arena, including dust, blood, and yes, the Invisible Man. He goes inside the band of the mummy, where he completely flicks him off the arena into the acid below. Spike the Devil Man comes up and uses his Devil Might Beam, but Broly is so fast that he dodges it with ease, kicking Spike in the head and knocking him out, flinging him over to where Barbara is. Grandpa Gohan comes out and the two of them go back outside to fight, where Broly ultimately overpowers the old man. Gohan removes his mask and reveals his identity, where the two of them embrace. Broly starts to cry even, he's so happy to see his grandpa after so long. Gohan simply smiles as he waves goodbye to them, vanishing. After getting the seventh Dragon Ball, they all fly off, where Broly goes off on his own, ready for the next Tenkaichi Budokai. And that's where I'm going to leave it here, make sure you like and subscribe, comment down below what you think's going to happen in part 3. Now, before I go, I want to quickly address something. I will not be continuing what if Goku arrived early, as, as I was writing the script, I didn't feel like anything would change really, if you think about it hard enough, except for the humans being on Namek. So, yeah, I'm just going to say that I'm not continuing it, it would just be different dynamic, I'll let you guys continue it, and, uh, yeah, bye!